good morning to all girls so today in this class we are going to see poem ode to nightingale by john keats in the previous class we saw what is meant by ode and then biography of john keats in this class we are going to deal what is ode Ode to Nightingale. What is the theme? And stanza one to stanza four, we are going to see in this class. Ode to Nightingale was written by the Romantic poet John Keats in the spring of eighteen nineteen. So his the poem was the Ode to Nightingale was written by John Keats. in the spring of 1819 actually it was called as a romantic poet okay a uh, romantic means in the literature it is imaginary okay those who are imagine about nature beauty love to expressing through the emotions feelings so that's why he called as a romantic poet it was contains 80 lines it is the longest of keats odes which include poems like ode on a gracious on and ode on melancholy the poem focuses on a speaker standing in a dark forest listening to the beguiling and a beautiful song of the nightingale bird so in this poem the poem uh, focuses on a speaker thing standing actually actually here the speaker is poet uh he was standing in a dark forest and listening to the big sound of a beautiful song of the nightingale bird this provokes a deep and meandering meditation by the speaker on time this one express here deep and meditation by the speakers on time death beauty nature and human suffering some the speaker would very much like to escape that means here the speaker would like to escape deeply from this situation what he had facing at the time at times the speaker finds comfort in the nightingale song and at one point even believes that poetry will bring the speaker metaphorically closer to the nightingale at the beginning of the song okay which one has sing the nightingale poet was comfort and then point and then a point even believe that poetry will brings the speaker metaphorically closer to the nightingale so at the uh, at at the one moment poet thing the nightingale brought to closer to him okay by the end of the poem however the speaker seems to be isolated figure the nightingale flies away and the a speaker use if whether the whole experience has been a vision or a waking dream at last end of the poem poet was isolated the nightingale swift flies away and the speaker and the poet think it is whether the whole experience has been vision or a waking dream so now we are going to see the stanza was a uh, poem so uh, already i told this poem contains eight stanzas each stanza had 10 lines okay so first we are going to see the first stanza actually here the poet intoxicated with the song got it the poet has intoxicated with the song so i'm going to explain a line by line so my heart aches under drowsy numbness pains my sins as though of hamlet i had drunk 
Here the poet says that his heart hurts as if he has just drunk a poison. So his heart has pain. Why it's pain? He has just drunk a poison. Hamlet. Hamlet is the poison which was uh, that Greek philosopher Socrates took when he was put to death for corrupting the youth. So as well as here the poet feels hoozy and numb. Okay, the poet feels numbness like when the dentist puts you on a never king. Imagine him saving back and forth kind of a drunk and out of it. So he feels like something numbness. Okay, and then the ache in the pain in his heart almost sounds pleasurable. The way he describe it, like when you hear a sad song, you really love that. Just pierce your heart, and you are like, this makes me. This makes him so sad, but that a song, that sad song. Okay, that song makes him so sad, but. If anyone tired to turn or it off, you would throttle them like that. Or empty, or empty tight some dull, opitate to the drains on minutes past, and late words had sunk. Here next two line, okay, so me, so be, maybe, poison is a bit exaggerated. He is not dying. After all, he tries another approach to explain how he feels. Actually, he feels himself. He was uh, the poison is exaggerated. He is not dying. After all, he tries another approach to explain how he feels. Okay, he feels as though he has a drunk, some powerful drug, or a painkiller. Okay, opiate is a painkiller that causes him to sink into a kind of oblivion. It sing oblivion is a pool. Okay, so in a Greek mythology, Lethe was a Lethe was a river in Hades, the underworld that made people forget all the memories if they drank from it. There's a really no way to dance around it. The speakers is comparing his feeling being totally strung out on a drugs. Optimum is a powerful drug. Made from the happy f- poppy flower, and it was all the rage among certain adventurous type in the nineteenth century. The poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge, for example, was an opium, 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 opium as an addict as well as was the writer. Actually, uh, in the first uh, four line, my heart aches and the drowsy numbness pain. My sense as though of Hamlet, I had drunk out, emptied out some dull opiate to the drains. One minute passed and late words had sung. Actually, uh, if he, the poem opens with, uh, the poem opens with the poet have the pain in heart because the song of the walls of the nightingale were making to get her ache. He feels some drowsy numbness, okay, so numbness, and then his sins are do ham like I had drunk the poison, which is the a uh, plant ham ham like plant, as well as the poison where uh, the great Socrates was used for corrupting the youth, okay, and then the opiate to the drains. That means opiate is a drug, okay, drugs. So how he was used? It was a Uh, the late word. It is a oblivion. It is a Greek mythology. One who drank it, they will forget all the moments. It's like so. Its feeling is like that. His feeling is like that because his voice, the bird's voice, is like that. And the next line, T is not though. T is not though envy of the happy lot, but being too happy in thinny. in thin happiness now we know that he the poet must be addressing the nightingale of the title so we all know that he addressing the title of the nightingale he wants to clarify that the pain he feels is not because he is jealous of the bird's happiness okay he uh, here is not jealous 
okay he was not jealous because of bird's happiness instead he is excessively excessively happy for the bird's happiness excessively he is happy for the bird's happiness he is like that friend who burst into tears when he shared really good news and cries okay i'm just so happy for you but you are not sure if they are really happy for you are just sad for themselves that do light wind dried of trees in some melodious plot of pigeon green and shadow numberless singest of summer in full throated hees so in the next 7 to 10 three line last three lines and why is the nightingale is so happy the poet is raising the question because it gets to sit in the trees all day because it gets to sit trees all day and sing about summer time and the bird is sing about summer time it's to the trees what here the nightingale is not a large bird it's a small bird it's not a large bird it is a small bird and it can fly which seems like enough grounds to call it light winged okay so and in a greek mythology dryad has a nymph that means a female spirit okay that lives in trees so what he says in the li- in the line so so just listen o oh, beech in green and shadow numberless singest of summer in full throated hees okay that do light wind dried of the trees in some melodious plot do light wind dried of the trees dried of the trees means in greek mythology it's a nymph it's a female spirit lives in trees the bird makes whatever space of plot inhabits plot melodious and is and this particular plot seems to have beech tree giving it a beech and green color giving it in a beech and green color the nightingale doesn't hold back it sings with a full throat okay he just raises his voice it raises his voice and he it sings with a full throat open throat like an opera singer in a solo opera you know the singer in one who sings a solo just he imagine that poem takes place in the speak of summer just he imagine the poem takes place in the summer second stanza oh for a drought of vintage that hath been cool a long age in the deep delved air tasting of flora and the country green dance on provincial song and sun burnt mead oh for a baker baker full of the warm soft full of the tree the blush op- oppressing with beaded bubbles winking at the brain and purple stray smile that i might drink and leave the world dusa and with the fade away into the forest day so here the poet desired to leave the world okay this stanza was explains about the poet desires to live desires to live the world the speaker longs for a good vantage or a wine vantage means wine okay wine that has been cooled in the earth he described the way the bubbles of the wine wink or burst at the brim of the glass and the way the wine stains his mouth purple he longs to drink enough to fade have a with the nightingale into the forest leaving his own world behind so the poet want okay here the poet uh just longs for a good vantage that means a wine okay it has been hate been that has been cooled in the earth that has been cooled in the earth he just described the way how the wine mean how the wine should be the bubbles of the wine 
wink or burst at the brim of the glass and the way wine strains his mouth purple. He longs to drink enough to fade away with the nightingale. He wants to fade away with the nightingale into the forest, leaving his own world behind. See here, oh for a drought of vintage that hath been cooled a long age in the deep delayed earth. Here the speaker longs for a drink of wine or some, uh, some other spirit that has been kept cool deep in the earth. Here vintage means wine. It is made from the, everyone knows that wine is made from grapes, from the same, uh, same harvest and people often refer to particular year in the wineries as a vintage. We have no explanation at this point for his sudden desire. Okay, he got a sudden desire to get his drunk on. He wants wine to just start bubbling up out at the ground as it go as you could stick a top right into the soil and let the good times low. Good wine needs to the needs to be kept cool, which is why people often store it in their in their cellars. According to Keats, the earth is like a gate wine cellar because they will prepare a wine, uh, they store the wine under the earth only. So here the poet thinks that earth is the earth is a gained wine, the gained wine cellar, that means a large, huge tasting of flora and the country green, dance and provincial song and sunburnt myth. Well, that okay. That makes sense. If you drank wine at the um, out of the earth, it's no surprise that it might taste like a flower. Flower, flower. I mean flower, and plants like a a country green. So uh, when he was, if you drank the wine from the earth, it's at nothing apart from that. No one is surprised. That is the surprise one. That it make. A, a taste like a flower and the plants like a country green. People sometimes uh, jokingly say that want to quiz every lost drop. Okay, some those who are having the habit of drinking wine, they have the joking. They have to quiz every lost drop out of the day. But the poet seems to mean it literally. Okay, not only does the Ed's wine taste like flour, but it also tastes like a dancing song and happiness. Okay, specifically, he is thinking of Provencal, a region in the south of France known for its wine. Okay, but uh, especially he was pointing out that Provencal, Provencal, that means a region in the south of France known for its wine song and a kind of poetic song known as troubadour poetry. Many troubadours wrote poems addresses to the an unattainable un, un, un lover. They are all called as a unattainable lover. Oh, for a beaker full of the warm south, full of the true, the blushful hypocrisy, the speaker wants to stick the south of the France or just the south in general into a bottle. Beaker, the glass, the guzzle, the whole thing down. He wants to distill the earth down to its powerful intoxicating essence. So the poet wants to uh, downfill the world. Distill the earth down to its powerful intoxic intoxicating essence, and then it is like when you go to the beach and wish you could just battle the breeze ocean, add to the tail, a back with you to school or the office. So, hypocrisy is the reference that there is a no reason you should know. Keats is showing off his knowledge of Greek mythology again. Hippocrates is the fountain of the most, a group of eight women. 
okay fountain of fame fountain of fame muses a group of eight women in a greek mythology who inspired struggling a poet the fountain bubbles up out of the earth where pegasus the famous flying horse his supposed to have a dug his hoof into the ground he wants to drink something that will make him a great poet and that's all get him drunk the liquid from the hypocrisian is a blush full because it is a reddish color of both wine and a blush but bead her bubble winking at the brain and purple strine mouth here he del- he del- he detailed delicious this poet describes the appearance of the wine now the poet is appearance of describes the appearance of the wine it is was reddish color it has like a blush and it has little bubble at the burst or wink at the brim of the beaker like a little eyes so the beam the beaker of it's look like a little eyes okay it also strains your mouth purple it makes a strain on your mouth like a purple when you drunk it like any strong red wine will do like any strong red wine will do they i might drink and leave the world unseen that i might drink and leave the world unseen and with the d fade away into the forest dim so here he just the poet sums up his intention okay he just brings to end the intention in these final two lines of this stanza he wants to get drunk on on this magical wine so that he can leave the world without a any one noticing and just fade into the dark forest with the nightingale how the nightingale bird uh, song was fading like that he wants to fade from in the dark forest how just he want to drink the wine the wine is he it was a rich like how it was nature how it makes a strain in their mouth how it make it a fade like a nightingale third stanza what the poet who live in the world okay what the poet would live in the world fate for a way dissolve and quite forget what do among the leaves has never known fate for a way dissolve and quite forget what do among the leaves has never known so here if uh, if this were a movie it is that now would be the part when the screen gets all blurry keep starts playing and the dream sequence begins here the speak here the poets dreams of fading out of the world of just disappearing in a very quiet way so now the poet starts to dream of fading out of the world he just disappearing himself in a very quiet way he wants to forget about those things okay he want to forget he want to forget about those things that the nightingale has never had to worry about so he wants to forget those things that nightingale has never had to worry about again we don't know much about which thing he means specifically but we assume that they must be have to do with the stresses and areas of living in in human society actually here he was exactly uh, he didn't mention what uh, things he want to forget forget okay but something we uh, assumes that mostly human wants to forget the social stresses of their um, uh, social stresses and uh, cares of living in a society so the bird is free of such area so here the you just take birds are not having any stresses 
okay like a caring stresses in a human society but human have a many stresses and cares so it's such things you want to forget so the weariness the fever and the fret here where men sit and hear each other gone the weariness the fever and the fret here where men sit and hear each other groan okay so uh, wait uh, just wait that is su supposed to be the dream sequence why he is he is talking about the depressing thing it seems he just he he just can't leave the world behind he just can't leave the world behind the world is full of tired and weary people sickness fever and massive stress massive stress like a fret fret is a massive stress stress he reduces all of the society down to once depressingly exaggerated image people sitting around and listen to each other groan and complain so people were sitting around and talking to each other and complaining to each other so this is a pretty blank view of the world but it just goes to the show how much of an effect the nightingale has led on him compared to the nightingale's carefree song our voice sound like a groan compared to the nightingale world our life is sound like a groan because we have so many stresses gossiping complaining each other but you just think about the nightingale is not having such a problem so that's why maybe the poets wants to forget all those things in the human society where palsy shakes a few sad last gray has where youth grows pale and specter thin and dies where palsy shakes a few sad few sad lost gray has where you are grow pale and specter thin and dies so he decided to take the whole depressing images thing to a new level describing the world as a place where the men momentarily uncontrollable moments of illness shake the last gray hairs on dying men's head palsy is a disease the cause of sudden involuntary movements and so the gray hair person is no long capable of controlling his own body so here you just think uh, the death is unavoidable okay if the age is going it is un uncontrollable once you got a last gray hair it's a symbol of dying man's head palsy is a disease suddenly which cause in the old age okay he is also almost bold okay in the section keeps comforts one's office favors enemies time okay so he feels here he just a favors which is the favorite enemy years means time okay time is not a permanent it's always move on once the time will go never we will get catch it so the time is going so our age is going our beauty is going age by time by time so he think time is the biggest enemy after you read the poem okay so this is the time is the speaker's enemy because it causes the young and beautiful people to turn old got it time is the speaker's enemy the poet the time is the poet's enemy because it causes the young and beautiful people to turn old pale thin as a ghost and eventually dead as a dead dead as a dormal okay so here the poet door nile so time is the speak is a poet's enemy because it causes the young and beautiful people to turn old pearl 
thin as a ghost and eventually dead as a door line so here so that's why the time is enemy so time like a death death is a bad so time is a bird bad so time death death is a bad bad so time is a bad and where but to think is to be full of sorrow and leaden high despair the world is a place where any kind to thinking leads to depressing thoughts and worries okay world is a place where any kind of thinking leads to depressing it's it is a world is a place to thinking all the depressing thoughts and worries there are no thoughts that can ultimately bring joy or peace thinking itself is the problem okay so what you say this is the place the world is a place to thinking all this kinds of these things of depressive thoughts and worries and there are no thoughts that can ultimately bring joy or peace thinking itself is the problem thinking itself is the problem so these sad and despairing thoughts make your high lid like lid weights okay so these despairing thoughts make your high lids like a lid weight you have trouble just staying awake and conscious during the day the world totally wears people down and tires them out where beauty cannot keep her luster as high or new love pin at them behind tomorrow where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes or new love pen at them behind tomorrow so this is the last line of the stanza here the poet continues to explain why the world of human time is such a bad place whether the beauty neither beauty nor love can survive therefore long neither the beauty nor a love because the speaker continues to explain of the world of human time is such a ba- bad place because neither the beauty nor the love can survive for a long time beauty loses her glowing lustrous eyes probably when they become leaden from depressed thoughts hard may be just from old age and new love cannot found and new love cannot pine ever beauty is high is once they have lost their luster love is fickle like that and has any one who loves ever been through senior it is often does loss a behind to morrow so through junior high school knows it often does not lost behind to morrow behind to morrow so this is the explanation of third stanza so now the poet is decided to fly away okay to leave the world to leave the human world because you want to escape from the worries and stresses okay so next stanza this is the fourth stanza in this stanza how he would fly away from this world how he would fly away from this world let's see so have away for i will fly to thee not charitated by bachos and his pets have away for i will fly to thee not charioted by back to on his per pats so all this he was thinking about depressing the world this make the poet think okay the world is full of depressing uh, the poet the world is make to thinking the make the poet to think get me out of here he needs to hate us on escape the class so here so here uh, what he decides so he wants to fly okay he wants to fly to join the nightingale he wants to f- uh, fly he want to escape from this human world and he wants to join with the nightingale 
It's refugee. It's a refugee from the world. But he knows that the booze is not going to take him. He can't relay on Bachos, the Greek god of wine. Okay, uh, Bachos, B-A-C-C-H-U-S. That is a, a Greek god of wine. Or any Bachos, Buddhist means a part, which is what he wanted earlier in the poem. Which is wanted earlier in the poem. So he wants to fly away to join the Nightingale. Even though he knows that Nightingale was a refugee. A refugee means uh, uh, it was uh, the bird will play um, uh, in the play uh, the bird not uh, stay in permanent place. It w it will move one place to one place. So he knows that it is refugee from the world. Okay, it is refugee from the world. But he knows that he booze. It's not going to take his can't. But on the viewless wings of poesy, though the dull brine perplex and retains. But on the weaveless wings of poesy, though the dull brine perplex on tree trade retains. Instead of wine, he is going to fly. Okay, instead of wine. Because na, the, everyone knows that the wine makes to something na, drowsy. So instead of the wine, he is going to fly on the wings okay, of his own poetry. Of his, of his own poetry. Poetry's wings are invisible. Poetry's wings are invisible or viewless. Okay. Now, uh, the poet is going to fly. Okay. How? Through the poetry wings. Poetry wings are invisible or be viewless. He hopeful that poetry will take him to the nightingale. He have the hope. Okay. The poetry will take him to the nightingale's world. Even though his brain is not so helpful in making the trip. His brightness confuses him and slows him down. Okay. Already with thee tender is the night and happily the queen moon is on her throne. Already with thee tender is the right and happily the queen moon is on her throne. So now and he all of the sudden he is with the nightingale. How did that happen? A countess slightly suspicious of how he can be already with the bird. So now he was already with the bird only. Okay. And even though he just complained, even though he was just complained about his brain has such a big roadblock. One possibility is that he joins the nightingale in his dream because the imaginary is the section he is associated with the darkness and night. So imaginary is in the section is associated with darkness and night. He is in the kingdom of the night. So now this is the time, night time. And he is the kingdom of night with soft and tender and the moon is visible in, in the sky. So it was a night which is a soft and tender, the moon is visible in the sky. He just, the imagery is more fanciful and imaginative here. The imagery is uh, more fanciful, more imagination and imaginative here. So the tender to the night, tender as the night was made a famous by the American writer F. F. Cott. Okay. Clusters clustered around by all her steady face. But here there is no light. Save what from heavens in with the breeze blown, though verandorous glooms and winding mossy ways, clustered around by all a steady ways. But here there is no light. Save what from heaven is with the breezy blown, through verandorous gloom and winding mossy ways. So here. The last four line of fourth stanza. What is this? The moon is surrounded by his her attendants. Okay, attendant. The moon here, uh, nature is described as a female. So the moon is surrounded by her attendants. Attendants means stars. Face means face. Face means stars. Okay. Despite all these sources of light, there is no light. 
despite of these sources there is no light except moons and their face except moon and stars other apart from that there is no light in the nightingales world in the nightingale world okay beyond that beyond what filter down through the trees beyond what filters um, through the trees what he is really describing in this complicated sounding lines is the fact it's a difficult line here the, actually he was described that the nightingale lives in the forest where trees block the light okay so ev everyone knows that bats were living in the trees where the uh, all the lights were blocked by the trees verandias gloom just means full of darkness that is caused by the plants okay so even uh, the light only is here moons and stars even though the trees were covered and then verandias glooms it means uh, caused by the plant it's a darkness getting in the way of the moon still the nightingale's home sounds like a magical place still the nightingale's home sounds like a magical place something out of the fairy tale something out of the fairy tale something out of the imaginary world something was in that so this is the explanation of stanza 4 so once again in the stanza 1 we saw that the poet has intoxicated with the song how he feel like a get a pain in the heart how he was enjoyed in the world through the uh, through the wine okay the poet desire to live the world the poet who lived in the world so in one part in one stanza he want to live the human world in the fourth stanza how he would fly away in the world how he just comparing so this is a stanza 1 to stanza 4 explanation i think you are all understand this thank you so much